Have you ever celebrated becoming debt-free only to find yourself back in credit card or other debt again? Well, you're not alone. <laughs> I got you and today I'm gonna be sharing five really powerful steps that I'm using to be able to pay down debt and that I think will be helpful for you in order to eliminate whatever you know feels unmanageable, whether you wanna become debt-free completely and never utilize it again, or manage it with maturity. You won't wanna miss what's coming up next because I'm gonna be sharing some super valuable steps uh, that have helped plenty of my students get results in their journeys as well. So stick around to the end because that's gonna be the most important tip. If you're as excited as I am to dive into these strategic, tactical, you know, things to do in your money journey to create financial freedom faster and build wealth without burning out, stick around, click the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so that you never miss a future video. Everything I share comes from my own personal experience and the work that I've been able to do with my hundreds of students from all over the world in helping them create financial freedom. And you know, it really all was sparked from me paying off over $90,000 of student loans and credit cards in three years before I I turned 30, which was in 2020. And since I've been able to grow my online business, leave my nine to five, and I chose to go back into debt, which I will dive into here, um, to be able to like learn how to leverage, you know, credit and use it to build faster um, without having to use our own capital. So let's dive right in. Number one is to reevaluate. So take some time to revisit your why because your vision is gonna be what keeps you motivated. So many times, you know, women come to me and talk about how uh, they don't feel like they can keep going. You know, they feel like giving up. They don't feel motivated as it, you know, takes time to actually hit your goals. It usually doesn't happen overnight. Um, but knowing and having a compelling vision is going to be what helps you to stay motivated on your journey because as long as it's truly compelling for you, it should get you revved up if you were to think about it or talk about it at length. I know for me, my why could literally make me cry if I started talking about it for real, for real. So um, revisit your vision and your why, write it down, um, put it somewhere that you can see it, and then you can move on into the tactical things such as, you know, how are you able to pay off the debt in the first place? So if you went into debt before and you were able to pay off everything, what were the steps you took then? And here's why I say that. There are so many different money plans and so many different, you know, levels of advice when it comes to what you do with your money. I think the best advice you could ever take is like, what's gonna be helpful for you? And if you've already gotten results, then you have data that you can essentially use to be able to help you replicate these results. So take some time, revisit how it was possible for you to be, pay off your debt before. And you know, it may not be copy and paste exactly what you do now, but you'll be able to see like, okay, well, what, you know, what were some advantages I had? What made it hard um, so that you can plan more you know, wisely this time around. The other thing is that you have to come to a decision or a conclusion as to whether you are going to pay down the debt and never utilize, you know, debt again, which is cool. Um, but do you choose to now in this season of your life learn how to use debt manageably. And what I mean when I say that is, to me, manageability is that you could pay it down, you know, in 12 months or less. And you may have to come up with a definition of what manageability looks like for you so that you don't feel overwhelmed or you know, like you're drowning underneath the debt um, because there are times in life where you just need to use, you know, money that you don't have. I have a student who her roof caved in unexpectedly and so she had to, you know, be displaced from her home, get her roof fixed and she wasn't able to use capital for that and maybe she didn't want to use her, you know, cash on hand for that. So there are unexpected circumstances that come up that kind of, you know, sometimes force us to have to to do something different or that we can make the decision, the choice to be able to do something different. I know I used to come from the school of thought that like all debt is bad, leave it alone completely. And with the stage I was in, that was true. Like I wasn't mature enough. I didn't have the discipline to be able to utilize debt and not let it get out of control. So if you know yourself, so this is where self-awareness is key. If you know that you don't have the discipline, 
then don't play with fire. <laughs> but if you know that you're maybe more mature in this season of your life, you have systems in place, a strategy, so on and so forth, then you might wanna give yourself a little bit more credit and trust that you uh, are you know, maybe a little bit different than you were before. I trust myself more now than five years ago when I had no plan and I was just spending frivolously on things that, you know, weren't actually adding value in my life. So that's a decision you're gonna wanna have to make before you go into this next thing, which is creating a plan. So I'm not gonna tell you what plan to choose, again, because it doesn't matter what I say as far as do the debt snowball or do the avalanche method. There's so many different options, but again, you have to be able to follow through. So what, what plan is gonna help you actually execute and, and get these results for yourself? Because maybe you did you know one plan before, but your life is completely different now. So you might wanna try something different. And this is why it's so helpful um, to be able to have support in the journey because then having that support can kind of help you tease out what's gonna be the best for you in this season. So as you're planning, essentially you want to audit your spending, right? Before you start budgeting and really give yourself a nice, picture of what has been going on with your money up until this point. It's one of the biggest mistakes ladies make is, is not auditing before they try to tell their money where to go um, is to figure out where it went. And in that process, you'll be able to see if there are things that you want to maybe shift or change. But I think that it's really important for you again to just go back to the drawing table of you know, what plan is gonna work best for me right now. I have a video on, you know, budgeting or money planning. So I'll make sure that is linked in the description and um, hopefully it helps you as you dive into that piece. Once you create your plan, right, that should include the decision to either consolidate, you know, see if you might qualify for a debt relief program, so on and so forth. These are decisions that you have to make and this is why no one can give you a blanket statement on what to do in your journey because, there are nuances to your specific situation that you're gonna probably have questions about, right? Once you solidify the planning, you go into the build phase, which is you know, building your emergency fund so that you have some cushion between you and life happening. You don't want to find yourself up the creek, you know, without a battle. So uh, making sure you have some level of an emergency fund. I can tell you, I personally feel good about having at least one month's expenses. But while I was on my first debt-free journey, I had a thousand dollars emergency fund, right? So um, it was better than nothing. And it came in handy because I did have to use it when I got into a car accident. It's a different story for a different day. Um, but you have to ask yourself, okay, well, what's gonna feel good for me to be able to focus on paying this debt down? Um, but still have some cushion if something were to come up. Is it $500? Is it $1,000? A month's worth of you know uh, living expenses, three months, six months, depending on your situation. And your own risk tolerance um, is gonna help you answer that question. Because if you are risk averse, you don't like taking risks, you may wanna have a little bit more. If you are a risk taker and you're cool with you know having a little bit less because you trust that you can make money you know if something were to come up, then maybe you have a little bit less in your emergency fund so that you can really hit um, your debt the way that you want to. But you build that emergency fund first before you start working on the debt so that if something is to come up, you are not completely, you know, um, completely caught off guard. Before we go on, I would love to know the one word that would describe how you're gonna feel when you pay this debt off again. Is it the same as how you felt the first time around or is it something different? I know my students oftentimes say that, you know, paying down debt feels freeing they feel like they have more space, they feel at peace. So just one word real quick in the comments to describe what that's gonna feel like for you because I would love to hear it. Number four is support. So what we know from research is not just money, that when you have support, essentially you're able to be at a higher rate of success. And when someone knows what your goal is, I think it's about 65%, go ahead and do your fact checking. And when you have like a meeting on the calendar, you're meeting with someone about these things, um, you're at over a 95% higher rate of success. So one, you've paid the debt off before, you can make this happen again, regardless of you know the circumstance and situation. But to really ensure, right, give yourself insurance on you know, what you're doing and how to get results and typically get those results faster, you're gonna want to get some support from like family, friends, a coach, you know, I don't know, your past, like who is it that you are gonna allow to support you, cheer you on, call you out um, to help you stay focused? 
as you are working through this next uh, debt-free journey um, so that you can ensure your success and be at over 95%. Like, so, well, like, why would you not do that? Really, it's like, do you want to be successful if you're not going to get support, if you know exactly what will help? Um, so that is maybe one of the key things that I can be helpful for you. And maybe you did it on your own the first time. I know in my journey, I was pretty much doing it by myself. But now I'm married and, and you know, I can call on different people in my life. I've got coaches and things like that that I can, you know, lean on to help me stay focused as I do this again. Last things last, okay? The fifth and final step is to play. So instead of like this being punishment, you paying down your debt, how can you turn this into something you can gamify, right? Um, whether it's learning how to earn more money, negotiation, changing your fees, you know, negotiating in your nine to five for more um, compensation, or is it, you know, being able to apply for new jobs that are even more exciting? So instead of it being something that's like dreary and a rain cloud in your life, how could you turn it into something that's exciting? Because it's giving you the opportunity to expand, to grow and become, you know, a different version of yourself. So don't forget to play in the process to execute the plan and track. So if you gamify it, let's say, you know, if you're on track, what kind of rewards can you weave into the process to help you stay focused, to help you stay motivated, incentivize yourself to be able to hit this goal one more time. I truly hope this helps you in your next debt-free journey, whether it's your last one or your next one, if you plan to learn how to manage debt maturely. Um, if this has been helpful, then make sure to, again, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We you know, publish videos every week that are meant to help women all over the world make progress in their money journeys and would love to have you join our community. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.